Hello guys, today I would like to show uh, headlocks from turtle position. Uh, my partner is going to be on turtle. And before we attack the head, um, let's talk about how you can make your, um, your headlocks more successful. And that's by threatening the back. So when somebody's in turtle, you can create a dilemma where where you can go for the head and they open their elbows and then as you go for the, for example, you go for the back, they need to close the elbow to their knees so they don't allow any hooks inside, etc., etc. But that will get the hands more away from their neck. So don't just go for, um, for head lock straight away, especially when he's holding your hands, it's being very difficult to close your hands together. But start also threatening the back to make him close his elbow, then maybe you can come back and you can elude his end defense, his end fight defense, okay? Now, for the sake of the technique, we will just go for the headlock. We, do, we won't play at the moment the dilemma between going to the back and to the front. Um, and we can see from here what are the mechanics to finish a headlock and what headlocks we can employ. So the first one is gonna be a high elbow guillotine. And it's one of the most important technique because it's uh, very hard to stop because you exclude everything, you cannot get his arm around. So we're gonna have a chin strap um, and uh, um, a tricep grip, and our shoulder is gonna be on, there, on the back of the head. So we create a wedge around his body, and this is called the three points of control. First point of control is gonna be the chin, second point of control is gonna be my shoulder behind his head, and third point of control is gonna be a hand on the vice, on the tricep. And from here you can notice that I have one knee on the floor and one foot on the floor. This, this facilitates rotation because if he wants to escape my grip, especially when I have a chin strap, he can start rotating that way and if I cannot follow him, his head will escape. But if he rotates that way, my foot is on the floor and just following me easily. Okay, it gives me speed to follow him around. Now, to do the high elbow guillotine, you can see that my head is on one side of his shoulder. What I want is to connect my bicep and go all the way through. So my arms are not particularly long, so if I try from here, it's quite difficult, especially if he's trying to stop me a little bit. But if I get my head to the other side, I can go all the way in, and I can cap with my hand on his shoulder. From here, what I do, I connect my hands together and keep my elbows high. Why is it important that I keep my elbow high? Because if I don't, it will grab around my shoulder. Go up, go up, go up, go up, up. Yes, and you can bring me down and start getting free. When I bring my elbow up, now if he tries to bring his arm across, he can't, it's very hard. Now, when you, when you want to finish a guillotine or a headlock, it is very important that your waist stays in front of the waist of your opponent. So when you are ready to employ the strangulation, you don't just wanna drop here without having control on his body because, uh, because he can just roll over. He can roll over and start getting free. You see our, our waists are pointing away from each other. So even if I squeeze now, it's very hard to finish. So the first thing I do, I need to find a way to block his upper body before I give up the top position and put myself at risk. I want to block his upper body or his lower body so I cannot roll over and I can maintain his waist in front of mine. So you're gonna have a chin strap, you're gonna have the three points of control. A chin strap, the shoulder behind the head and the hand on the tricep. When we're ready, we slide the head on the other side of the shoulders and bring the hand across and connect. And you can see that my elbow is high already. Now from here we create angle. And what I do, I will take two steps, one, and two, until my knee is close to his ribs. And now from here, I drop and bring my leg over his uh, body. So he cannot roll over. The only way he can roll is that way, but it facilitates a mount for me to finish. You're gonna see in a bit. So I'm here, I'm here, and I squeeze, and I finish the block. If you wanna be a little bit more, uh, a little bit safer and you have the flexibility and the authenticity to do so, once you have 
your wedge around the neck and you do the steps one and two before dropping you can pull all the weight up to your right knee or to the knee that is on the floor and bring the leg across first and drop after notice how i dropped on my right shoulder not on my back otherwise it turns with me and from here you squeeze and we finish the head lock in the case he decides to roll before I put my foot on his, on his lower body to block him. And I go here and rolls. I can block his legs and I can go into mount. And you can see that our ways are still facing each other. And from here, I bring my feet around his butt and pull my hips in as I squeeze. I will finish the high elbow guillotine. Now, I said at the beginning that we can create a dilemma between the back and the front, but we also can create a dilemma between a high elbow guillotine and an arming guillotine. Because when I'm around his neck, the first thing he will try to do, he will try to find a hand to not let them connect. And usually it's easier to get behind his arm and connect like so. In reality, this dilemma that I'm playing it's continuous. I do here, I do here, I do here, I do here. Sometimes, even when I'm sitting and ready to finish, I can switch to a high elbow or to a, a arm and guillotine. So we are here, he's trying to stop me. I cannot, go, I cannot go in front of his neck for a high elbow guillotine. We go behind his arm and connect like so, rubbing the external part of your hand. And from here, the first thing I wanna do now I don't want to think about choking. I'm not going to squeeze his head. What I want is to bring my bicep as close as possible to his neck. From here, the choke is going to be super strong. So once I'm here and I have my hands connected, like what I want to do, I want to close my elbows like so and sit down. And the first thing I do, I grab his legs so he cannot roll away from me. The same concept as before, not to let his waist away from mine. Now, because I have control over his leg, I can start working to bring my bicep to his neck. Come around, please, cameraman. So, can you see here, at the moment, my bicep, here, please. Get your arm a little bit down. Here, you can see that my bicep and his artery that is here are disconnected. So even if I squeeze now, there is no choke. So what I do, I will extend my arm in a shrugging way, so I kind of cut through the lack of space. And at the same time, I want to bring my head over my shoulder. So you create this uh, movement where his neck would get pushed into my bicep. So as I'm here, I start shrugging, 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 and get my head over. And now you can see there is a big connection between my bicep and his artery. And now from here, squeeze, and you get a very strong choke. You can see his eyes, his suffering eyes. So it's not about how strong you squeeze, it's about how you can position the bicep close to the artery and, and close it. So I'm here. It doesn't let me get the other end across his neck, so I go behind his elbow and do that. From here, as I told you, I don't think about choking him. I just think, I just think about positioning him and locking his lower body. Pull and block his leg as soon as possible, even if I have like an off back. Now for me, the whole thing is about connecting my bicep to his neck. So I start shrugging and go across with my head. From here I can feel his neck. You want to feel the soft part of his neck into your bicep. And from here I can squeeze and choke. I wanna make it worse, I can go on the floor and block his, his uh, upper body, lower body. Same thing, if he rolls over to stop me, I will grab his leg, base on my head to have like a tripod, bring my legs around his butt and start pushing my hips in as I squeeze. I will finish the chalk. So they're gonna look like this, both of them. Number one. Number two. rolls the 
Merci. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Nicholas, for suffering. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned. More videos to come. <laughs>